Lisa's mink coat transformed into a throw. So the next project I'm going to be working on is a fur throw. The jacket is a very light mink. It is absolutely beautiful. But um, I'm limited to the size of the fur. So this fur from the shoulder to the bottom is 31 inches. So I'm not quite sure how large the fur throw will be. It's going to be definitely on the smaller side. But the customer also sent in some leather, uh, her leather belt. So we might be able to incorporate this into the throw, maybe to make it a little bit wider. Um, but we'll see as I start to take it apart and deconstruct it. The inside lining will not be used in this, um, in this project. So the lining will be taken off and returned to the customer. And uh, let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the lining. Once the lining is completely removed, I'm going to start working on the sides, removing any of the supportive structures that are along the lapel area and up into the sleeves. Once the sleeves are removed and most of the coat is opened, I decided that I needed more space to do the cutting. So I brought it down to my work area. As you can see, the flare at the bottom is quite wide, so I'm gonna to have to work on that as well. I had already marked out where I was going to do the cutting. And right now I'm just making my straight cuts and my straight strips. There is an opening here and the opening was for the belt. So I'm going to hand sew that closed. I wanna make sure that that's nice and secure. And I'll be doing that on both of the openings. Mark it out, cut out the sleeve because I'm gonna be using it as part of the strips. Again, what's challenging with this particular fur is the actual size of the fur. So I wanna make it as large as possible and using every single little bit of the fur that I can possibly manage. Once the strips were all cut, then it was just a matter of laying them out to see which of the furs, the coloration matched each other. And now I'm working on the smaller strips and I'm going to be sewing those together as well. And here I'm also looking to see the colors to see what matches the best for the lower part of the fur. All those pieces will be sewn together and then sewn to the bottom. Some of these pieces will also be used in the border area. Mm -hmm. 
Again, I'm working with very small, thin pieces of fur, and those will all be sewn together on the fur machine. I'm cutting the lower edge off the bottom of the fur so this way it will be nice and flat when they are sewn together. I have already completed the outside border area. I sewed all those smaller pieces together to make panels for the bottom. And I'm going to be adding those panels to the bottom as you can see here. marking them and labeling them, making sure that I'm going to sew them in the correct position. Here I'm putting down the leather that I took from the belt and I used it as leather stripping in between. You can see the strips on the back, but not really on the front. So there are the leather strips and sewn together. They're hardly noticeable, but they do extend the side. The customer chose a pre-quilted backing. The final measurement was 44 by 44. And here is the fur in her home. It is absolutely beautiful. Come visit us at DynasQuilts.com.